Hello, welcome to Gen Z Finance. I'm an older Gen Z on the cusp of being a young millennial here on YouTube documenting my financial journey. March has come to an end, which means it's time to update my net worth tracker and review all of my net worth and investment updates for the month of March. I do have a copy of this net worth tracker and a couple of the other spreadsheets that we will be talking about in this video for sale. You can check out the description box down below if this seems like something you'd be interested to try out for yourself. So first I'm going to provide an update on the balances of all of my accounts. For all of the cash on hand, I have now $24,645.07. This actually grew by about $1,100 from February. My 401k at the end of March was just under $15,000. I contributed $1,500 for the month. Overall, my account actually grew by $1,900, which means I had about $400 in growth from this account, so that's awesome. For my HSA, we are just over $4,000. I put in as normal $258 and 34 cents and then my account grew by another 100 ish dollars for my Roth IRA I put in $500 as normal and we are now just over $9,000 in this account it increased by nine and a half percent from February to March so I'm pretty happy with that I have a small pre-tax 401a account with my part-time job and that is now at $286 now for my taxable brokerage accounts so these are both at M1 although I believe next month I will be consolidating these and actually moving them over to to a Vanguard brokerage account. And combined, I had just about $3,200. Altogether, my brokerage grew by $315. So across the board, I had some pretty mild gains, but gains nonetheless, so I'm very happy about that. For the entire month, I invested $2,529.43, $2 um, and $2,500 is about what I uh, would like to see myself invest every single month. It is a little bit lower than I have done in January, February, but I'm very happy with this $2,500. Overall, my assets in total grew by $4,678.05, which represented just over a 9% increase from February. Next, we're going to talk about my liabilities. It's very simple. I just have credit cards. I paid off all of my student loans. So the balance on my credit cards at the end of the month was $875.26. And this is all three of my credit cards. I pay off my statement balance in full every month. It's just my statement balance is due before the end of the month. So by the time the end of the month actually comes, I have accrued some more spending on the card. And then all of these numbers feed in over here to my net worth section. So once again, it shows the breakdown of my assets to my liabilities, which means my total net worth for the month was $55,388.71. Overall, my net worth increased by 8.5% from February to March. And since I began tracking my net worth in February of 2019, my net worth has increased by $83,500, which is almost a 300% increase. And then year to date, so looking at just uh, my net worth at the beginning of 2021 to the end of Q1, my net worth has increased by $12,517, which is almost a 30% change. So this spreadsheet and these numbers then feed over to my net worth dashboard. This is my net worth breakdown for the month of February. So I'm going to come down to this drop down and select March of 2021. And this updates all of these charts. Here you can see that my cash on hand makes up about 43.8% of all of my assets. And the other 56% is everything that I have invested. I do really like to keep an eye on how much of my assets are kept in cash because ideally I would like to see my cash shrink as a percentage. I definitely want the bulk of my assets to be invested instead of cash because that just means that that money is going to be growing faster and working harder for me. Um, this assets by account chart further breaks down and shows you where all of my assets are held. The only liabilities I have are the credit cards, so that's why these are just one singular circle. And then down here at the bottom is the net worth trends. So I have the filter set to show all of the previous data leading up until the end of March. This just shows you my net worth over time and how I got from the negative $28,200 I was at to the over $55,000 that I have now. So to me, it's crazy to see over on the left just how small my assets were in the beginning and how large these liabilities were. And then now to see them kind of switch, that's just really exciting to see. And I like this visual. 
So now it's time to go over my investing, not spent, and giving rates for the month of March. If you are interested exactly how I calculate all of these, I will leave a link to a previous video where I went over it more in detail for March. So in total, like we talked about, I invested $2,530 and my total gross income for the month was $5,250. So this is my gross income. So before taxes are taken out and everything, I just think this is for me the simplest way to track this. And that means that I invested 48.6 percent of my gross income. This is highlighted in yellow because my goal is to actually invest 50 percent of my gross income every single month, so I fell just shy of this. You can see that for Q1 I actually hit the goal overall, so I'm not too worried that I fell just shy in March because overall in Q1 I invested 52.5% of my gross income. Next I'm going to talk about my not spent rate. So my total spending for the month, not including anything I sent to investments, because I don't consider that spending, I actually consider that saving. So I, in total I spent $1,230.35 this month. My net income, so this is everything that I actually brought into my budget, was just shy of $2,800, which means that you just did not spend almost 56% of my net income for the month. And then this third savings rate just combines the two previous ones. So in total, I either invested or did not spend $3,361.12. Again, my gross income was the $5,252, which means I either invested or did not spend almost 64% of my income. This is highlighted in yellow because it didn't quite hit my goal. I think my goal for this is to invest or not spend 70% of my income every single month and you can see for q1 i came just shy uh, under hitting this goal again i'm not too worried about it because i still think that's pretty good so these are my three i guess you would call them saving rates this is how i choose to think about them and track them and then finally the fourth rate that i do track is my giving rate so i track both how much i'm giving to charities via donations which in march was zero dollars and then i also track how much i give to family or friends or gifts which in march was actually six hundred dollars if you look at just what i gave to charity that was obviously zero percent however if you take into account my entire giving for the month including the gifts i actually gave 21 and a half percent of my net income this is using the net income that you see in cell d17 and for the quarter i have given 1.20 percent of my net income to charity and then if you uh, take into consideration all of my giving that came out to just under nine percent for the quarter which is green i don't have an exact idea of what i want this to be but i think my goal for my total giving percentage will be four to five percent of my net income so we'll see how that plays out throughout the rest of the year quickly i wanted to go over just a couple of more things like we mentioned for the month of march i spent about twelve hundred dollars and my limit for every single month based on my total yearly goal of spending less than fifteen thousand dollars for 2021 that monthly limit would then be one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars so you can see i came nineteen dollars and sixty five cents underneath this limit this month. So far, so accounting for all of my spending through Q1, I've come $826.91 under my limit so far, which means that I still have about $12,000 left to spend for the rest of the year. So I am on track with this goal. And then the last thing that we're going to look at, this is just my safe withdrawal rate tracker. So for the month of March, my invested assets is $31,600, which would pay me $1,200, $1,100, or $950 a year at 4%. 3.5 and 3% respectively. So the cool thing about this month is that now if I wanted to withdraw 3.5% of my portfolio every year, this would now provide me over $1,000 a year, which yes, is only $90 a month, but it's still a nice little milestone to hit on my journey to FI. So I think the next big milestone would be when I could withdraw $1,000 a year withdrawing at a 3% rate. I know it has this little lineup here of a goal of how much I want at a certain age, but that's not a real goal. I just kind of put that in to help set this up and to give me some idea of how much a certain amount of assets would be able to withdraw from me, but I don't actually have an FI number or an FI date. I've done a video about this that I might actually do an updated video about this because last video was a while ago and it really wasn't that great if I'm being honest. So I don't have a goal that I'm really keeping in mind right now. The goal is just to see these numbers increase over time and hit each next milestone. So we're on track there.
Like I said, if you liked any of the spreadsheets that you saw in this video, make sure to check out that link down below. That's going to be everything I'm going to talk about. I know I also usually review my passive and miscellaneous income for the month, but I think I'm going to just go ahead and switch those to only doing those quarterly. If you have not yet already, please make sure you go check out my March budget review for a complete breakdown of my income spending and saving for the month. Also this week, I will be posting a Q1 update on my 2021 financial goals. So please make sure you are subscribed and also give Give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. As always, I hope y'all are staying safe and healthy and that you have a good day.